Hey guys, this is part four of our introductory tutorial for Magic version two. If you haven't watched the first three parts yet, you should definitely do that first. The links are in the description. And as always, if you have any questions about anything in those videos or in this one, please visit our forums. The link is also in the description. In this tutorial, I'm gonna cover the topic of scenes. Scenes are just groups of modules that are all shown together here in the work area and you can see that I've already added a few modules like I did in a previous tutorial. So this group of modules is a scene. Each scene is accessed by this tab at the top, which is a lot like what you might find in other applications such as web browsers or document editors. To add a new scene, you can just go to the scene menu and choose the add new scene option. To switch between scenes, you can click on the tabs. When I switch scenes, not only does the work area change to show the modules in the scene, but the magic window changes to show the output of the scene. I'll go ahead and add a module to my new scene, just so that you can see how the magic window changes when I switch back and forth. There's no limit to the number of scenes you can add in magic. You can add as many as you want. I'll go ahead and add another one. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Control shift n or Command shift n on Mac. When you have a lot of scenes, it's very useful to rename them so you can keep better track of them. You can right-click on the tab, which gives you a menu with a lot of options. Select the Rename option and type in your new name. There are some even more useful things you can do to keep your project organized when you have a lot of scenes. The first thing is to show the folder panel, which you can do here from the scene menu. You can see that not only does the folder panel have some convenient buttons, like when you want to add more scenes, but it also displays a list of all the scenes in your project. The really convenient thing you can do is add a folder, and then you can group your scenes together by dragging them into the folder. This will probably help you keep track of all your scenes when you have 10 or 20, or maybe even 100 scenes in your project. You can add as many folders as you want. And you can rename folders, just like scenes, by right-clicking and selecting the Rename option. You can even group folders within folders. It's important to understand that folders don't change how any of your scenes or modules work, and they don't change how anything looks in the magic window. They're just there to help keep you organized. Similarly, you can drag scenes around in the folder panel to change their order, and you can drag their tabs around too. You can even drag modules around in the work area like this, but it doesn't change how they work. The point is to let you structure your project and your scenes in a way that's clear and easy for you. Another important thing to notice is that each tab has a little X button in the corner. This button does not delete or remove the scene from the project. It just hides it temporarily, so you can make extra room if your tab area is crowded. Now you can see that even though the Space Wave tab is hidden, the scene is still being displayed in the magic window. To show the tab again, click on the arrow next to its name in the folder panel. The current scene is always outlined in white in the folder panel. If you actually do want to remove a scene, you can right-click on its name, either in the folder panel or in its tab, and just select the Remove option. You can remove multiple scenes at once by shift-clicking to select a range. Now, as I'm sure you've realized, having many scenes in a project is a great way to create visuals for a live show or for a music video. You can have very different scenes for different songs, or even for different parts of a song, and it will make it a lot more interesting for your audience. But how do you actually manage all your scene changes in a way that's convenient and easy, and also looks good? Magic has a perfect function for that, and it's called the Playlist, which you can open here from the Window menu. The Playlist's job is to have all the controls and options for changing scenes in one convenient place. All you have to do is add a Playlist entry, and select the scene you want to use. Then you can click on each one's number button, like this, 
or you can click on the previous next buttons, which go up or down the list, or you can use the keyboard shortcut for the previous next buttons, which are the bracket keys with Control on Windows or Command on Mac. No matter which way you navigate, the corresponding scene gets highlighted in this cyan color. But the most important thing for you to notice is that when you change scenes with the playlist, they all transition very nicely and smoothly from one to another, as you can see in the magic window. If you want to edit the transitions, you can select Show Transition Options from the menu, and then this little box here appears, which is the transition duration in seconds. If I increase the transition duration, the scenes will take longer to fade into one another, like this. But keep in mind, every playlist entry can always have its own unique transition setting. Okay. So all the options I just mentioned still require you to use the mouse or keyboard. But what if you don't want to do that? What if you just want Magic to run automatically without ever touching the computer? Magic does have an automatic mode and it's called Auto Advance, and you can access it in the menu with Show Auto Advance options. Auto Advance means that Magic will automatically advance to the next scene in the list after the specified duration, which is shown here. I'll change them to 5 seconds, just for the purpose of this tutorial, and then if I click on the A button, which turns on the Auto Advance function, this group of scenes will literally run forever. The current scene is highlighted in yellow when Auto Advance is turned on. I'm going to let this run for a bit, and while it's running, I want to point out that you can change the order of the playlist by dragging the items around. And if you right-click, you get a menu with different options, such as removing, duplicating, etc. If you have Magic's Performer Edition, you're probably going to want to use MIDI or OSC to control the playlist. This is by far the most versatile method of playlist control, because it lets you run everything from your hardware controller or even from other software. In a later tutorial, we'll discuss MIDI and OSC in much more detail, but for now, just know that you can use them to control pretty much everything in the playlist. If you're an advanced user, you'll definitely want to use this method when setting up Magic for a live show. Now I'm going to turn off Auto Advance, because there's one last big thing I want to discuss. The playlist window is not just important for controlling live visuals, but also for when you're creating movies to be exported. To show you what I mean, I'm going to open the Input Sources window, add a sound file to my project, connect it to my sources, and then I'm going to enable this option here, which is called Playback Control. Playback Control means that the playlist gets controlled by audio playback, so whenever I press the play button, the auto advance automatically turns on, and when I stop the playback, the auto advance turns off. If I let it play for a while, which I'll do in a few seconds, you'll see that it will go through the playlist with the order and the durations specified. In this way, you can use Magic kind of like a real-time video editor. To make it even more like a video editor, you can select this option here, Show Start Times, which shows the exact start time of each scene relative to the audio playback, and you can edit the times just by clicking. If you edit the time of an entry in the middle, all the subsequent ones get pushed back. When you're satisfied with how your playlist is configured, you can go to the Export Movie box, and just make sure to click on the Use Playlist option. This option means that when Magic is creating the movie, it will use all the scenes in the playlist, with the order, durations, and transitions that you specified. To save some time, I won't start an export now, but I encourage you to try it. And if you need a reminder about how exporting works, just go back and have a look at our first tutorial. The final thing I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how to access the sample projects included with Magic. Go here to the Help menu and choose the Open Sample Project option. Magic comes with many sample projects that demonstrate a wide variety of topics, and now that we're at the end of our introductory tutorials, 
you should be able to understand what's going on in most of them. I'm going to go ahead and select the Many Scenes project because it's there specifically for the purpose of showing you a project with many scenes in it. I'm going to turn on the Auto Advance function so that you can see how each scene responds in different ways to my voice. With this many scenes, it's easy to create a really interesting show or video for your audience. The best magic projects tell interesting visual stories that are fun and engaging because they utilize many scene changes. I encourage you to play around with this project, not just to learn about the concept of having many scenes, but also to explore each scene in detail and to really understand how each module and each parameter is used in order to create specific types of effects. So that's it, a nice little overview of scenes and the playlist, and how you can create very complex projects for your live events, or your music videos, or whatever type of scenario you might be using Magic for. I hope you've enjoyed all four of our introductory tutorials for Magic version 2, and don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you can get notified when we release more advanced tutorials in the future. In the meantime, if you have any questions, remember to please visit our forums. We really look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much.